I'm Janet Mock. I'm the author of Redefining Realness and the host of MSNBC So Popular. So I think I was 22 when I moved here. It seems kind of ridiculous, but I blame TV. Uh, largely it was because of Felicity. I was obsessed with that show. She went to the fake UNY, and so then I applied to NYU for grad school for journalism. Going to J school enabled me to then kind of take internships, kind of get acclimated to downtown Manhattan, meet new people, develop my skills and reporting and all that stuff. But yeah, Felicity, Carrie Russell, who's still like one of my favorite like white girls. Jorna Hurston's novel was the blueprint for me. I learned how to excavate self and then to share that in an intimate space like memoir. The Rise Were Watching God, I just saw so much of myself and my own journey there. Like what was important to me was the act of self-revelation and sitting on your porch at your most bare, at your dirtiest and telling someone that you feel so intimate with about your experience, about the things that you've gone through, about your entire life story. I think people should identify however they want to identify, and I think their level of disclosure or visibility should just be based on whatever their safety level is, whatever they feel is at their own discretion. For me, I always knew that I was going to work in media and be public facing. Do I want to talk about being trans every single day? No. I don't know if I would say that trans is a transitionary <laughs> like identity. I'm sure some people may see it that way, but it's not for me to say how other people think about their own transness. I think this level of visibility that's happened with like trans women of color being out in cultural spaces has helped people have better language and to be more aware. So increased visibility definitely helps like with educating people a little bit. I think that if I'm only performing the way in which people want me to perform for a whole community of people, it's not gonna be helpful for anyone because I'm not being myself. I'm not doing what feels truest to me. And I think that that's why I center pop culture as the access point to which I wanna talk about different kinds of issues that are not just solely focused on my transness, right? And I think that because trans is something that has been framed as so sensational and like freak showy, people always just wanna focus on that piece of my identity. I'm not the source for your education. I think Beyonce is such a lightning rod because she's popular. She subscribes to all of the respectability politics, and then, but then the next piece of that is that she's also a black woman doing this. And we have always known that black women's bodies don't belong to black women in American culture. There's a piece of that that she's always going to be analyzed in this way of like, she doesn't know what she's doing. Like, she doesn't know how she's colluding with the system. She doesn't know that she's like feeding into, you know, the male gaze and that she da 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 I feel like just being so popular, being so successful, she's already, and so public, she already has a target on her back. And so putting out images like that, saying that she's a feminist, learning to like politicize herself and her message is just kind of like this axis of evil and trolling. <laughs> I don't know yet, because there has been nothing. There's been like, maybe sometime in the fall in Hawaii. That's all I know. I know it'll be on Oahu. <laughs> that's, all, that's as far as my schedule has allowed me to plan a wedding. So, because nothing's been done except like looking at two bridal magazines. And that was enough to like be like, I don't even want a wedding. Yeah. Redefining realness. There's a sassy part for you. <laughs>